Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. When I was growing up, my least favorite subject was history. It was the hardest for me. Whenever I would fail a history exam, I would always complain to my dad, Why do we have to know about the past in order to prepare for our future? And then my dad would start to lecture me about some kind of historical event. But I will say, not all history is boring, but it is mostly the history that relates to a medium that you really enjoy. May 1st, 1999. The day that is, in my opinion, the day SpongeBob SquarePants officially debuted to the public. Sometimes there seems to be a debate as to whether SpongeBob premiered on that day or on July 17th, 1999 even among Nickelodeon themselves. On the official Nick Rewind Twitter account, they would say Spongebob premiered on this day in 1999 or something like that every year on May 1st, but Nickelodeon celebrated the 10th and 20th anniversaries in July of 2009 and 2019 respectively. This is probably because they've gone all out with the 10th anniversary with the ultimate Spongebob Sponge Bash in 2009, and kids would be on summer vacation at that point and would have had more time to watch that massive 50 hour marathon. While that makes sense, the day Spongebob officially premiered is May 1st, 1999, so I don't care. May 1st, 1999, to me, will always be the official anniversary of Spongebob Squarepants. Now we've entered the year 2021, which means that this is the year of the 22nd anniversary of Spongebob. 22 years? Oh man, I'm old. Whenever an anniversary comes up, it's always fun to look back on the past, especially within the last year. But today, we're not doing that. No, no, no. Today, we're going to be looking back on the first 10 years of the series. The SpongeBob History Song is a song that was created going over the first 100 episodes of the series, or some of them. This song was created and released exclusively on the special features of the Season 6 Volume 1 DVD which came out on December 8th, 2009. The composers and vocalists of this song were veteran Spongebob composers Nicholas Carr, Sage Guyton, and Jeremy Wakefield. I have a massive love for this song. It's so catchy, it's fun to sing along to, and it talks about a decent collection of episodes. When my family and I went on vacation, I would stay up late and listen to this song a lot from the DVD. It was originally released on the Season 6 Volume 1 DVD, but these days, I only have this complete Season 6 DVD, which was released on November 13th, 2012. It's still basically the same thing though. While the discs say, Complete 6 Season, popping them in a DVD player shows that they are literally the discs from the original two separate volumes of Season 6. So now we're gonna go over all that this song recalls. Specifically, I'm gonna talk about the actual episodes that are referenced in this song, and maybe a couple other things that the song talks about. I'm not going to discuss every single piece of stock footage from seasons 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 that was used in the video, and the episodes from those same seasons that didn't have stock footage in the video. I'm also not going to discuss the episodes that weren't referenced, because all of that would just take forever. So now that the rules are covered, let's jump into this. The Spongebob History Song starts up and mentions how Spongebob's had 100 adventures and is going to go over some of them. The 100 adventures statement is partially true because those 100 adventures make up the entirety of seasons 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But you guys know me, I always talk about the series by the total amount of individual episodes that make up the show. And I consider that 100 adventures term as either production episodes or half hours. This means that the total individual amount of adventures that occur by the end of season 5 is 196. This also means that every event mentioned in this song are from episode 1, Help Wanted, to episode 196, Stanley S. Squarepants. The first event that was talked about in this song was from episode 1, Help Wanted, and it was none other when Spongebob wanted a job at the Krusty Krab quite badly. <laughs> Let's be real, what else would it be? The second event they went over was from episode 3, Tea at the Tree Dome, when Spongebob met Sandy Cheeks and found out that she breathes air, which is bad for sea creatures to breathe. This one is a bit weird because none of the clips during this part are from Tea at the Tree Dome. This clip right here is from episode 189, Pest of the West, and this close-up of Sandy pissed off is from episode 57, Survival of the Idiots. 
Also, SpongeBob doesn't dry up due to a lack of water in the tree dome in either of these episodes. I know I said I wasn't going to go over what clips were and weren't used from all the episodes, but this was an exception since the footage used here was a little odd. Moving on, the next event was from episode 5, Ripped Pants, where Spongebob ripped his pants and discovered that it's a good way to get some attention and laughs. It's true. The next event they talked about was from episode 6, Jellyfishing, where Spongebob and Patrick went out jellyfishing for a nice leisure afternoon. After that, the song went over the event from episode 7, Plankton, where Plankton used some evil genius tricks to control Spongebob's mind in a plan to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. The next event the song discussed was from episode 11, Home Sweet Pineapple, when a swarm of hungry nematodes ate Spongebob out of his pineapple house. Actually, the nematodes were thirsty and they drank him out of his house. After that, the song talked about the event from episode 22, Muscle Bob Buff Pants, when Spongebob ordered a pair of inflatable arms known as Anchor Arms to try to look strong. The final event from season 1 that the song went over was from episode 31, Suds, where Spongebob got sick with a case of the suds, but instead of going to the doctor, Patrick took care of him like a doctor instead. The next verse started talking about events from season 2. The first event from season 2 they went over here was from episode 45, Bossy Boots, which was the time when Pearl worked at the Krusty Krab and Mr. Krabs was the father to a whale. After that, the song discussed the event from episode 46, Big Pink Loser, where Patrick won an award after seeing all of Spongebob's trophies, but luckily he got an award for doing absolutely nothing longer than anybody else. The next event was from the very next episode, episode 47, Bubble Buddy, where Spongebob blew a bubble friend and everybody got pissed off. After that, they skipped ahead a few episodes, and the next event was from episode 50, Wormy, where Spongebob and Patrick befriended Sandy's pet worm and named him Wormy while they were pet sitting Sandy's pets. The next event the song went over was from episode 57, Survival of the Idiots, where Spongebob and Patrick bugged Sandy while she was in the middle of hibernation. The following event they talked about was from episode 62, Squirrel Jokes, where Spongebob was on stage telling jokes about squirrels, which is what bugs Sandy most. I thought that was when people took the name of Texas in vain. Moving on, the next event discussed was from episode 68, Frankendoodle, where Spongebob found the magic pencil and created Doodle Bob, which resulted in a brouhaha. The final event from season 2 the song discussed here was from episode 72, Krusty Love, where Mr. Krab falls in love with Mrs. Puff and spends too much money on her. Can't blame him. The chorus played again, and then the final verse of the song compiled a few random events from random episodes of seasons 3, 4, and 5, all in one place. The first event they talked about here was from season 4, and it was from episode 122, Have You Seen This Snail, where Spongebob forgot to feed Gary, and by the time Spongebob remembered, Gary had already run away. The next event here was from season 4, and it was from episode 131, Squid Bob Tentacle Pants, where Spongebob and Squidward were fused into the same body. After that, the next event was from season 3, from episode 101, Party Pooper Pants, where Spongebob hosted a party and invited all his friends to it. This was also the only episode from season 3 referenced in this song. That's it? The next event was from season 4, from episode 135, Ghost Host, where the Flying Dutchman stayed at Spongebob's house when his ship was wrecked. And that was all the events from season 4 that the song went over. Moving on, all the remaining events they discuss here are from season 5. The first event from season 5 they go over here is from episode 161, Fungus Among Us, where Spongebob touched this ick and it spread to half a bikini bottom. The next event was from episode 169, To Love a Patty, where Spongebob cooked a perfect Krabby Patty and fell in love with it. After that, the song discussed the event from episode 181, Atlantis Square Panis, where Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, and Sandy went to Atlantis, and Spongebob and Patrick took a picture of the world's oldest living bubble, causing it to pop. The next event the song talked about was from episode 189, Pest of the West. For those who were curious about Spongebob's ancestors, this was about a hayseed named Spongebuck Squarepants. The final event referenced in this song was from episode 192, Whatever Happened to Spongebob, where Spongebob got hit on the head and grew a lump, and he couldn't remember his name, friends, hometown, or anything for that matter, and that he should have listened to this song to help him remember. The chorus played one last time, and the song ended. And that was the Spongebob History Song. 
It is a great song to listen to, but looking at it critically, there are a few odd points. To get the big one out of the way, why is there only one episode of season 3 that is talked about in this song? let alone it being from Party Pooper Pants. It may not be that major of an issue, but from what I've heard, this episode is not the highest praised episode from Season 3. There are a lot of other universally loved episodes of Season 3 they could have mentioned here, like Episodes 88, Idiot Box, 91, Snowball Effect, 102, Chocolate with Nuts, or 116, Spongebob Meets the Strangler, just to name a few. Obviously, I'm not experienced with composing music or writing lyrics, but I'm sure there could have been some way to make it work. Additionally, I also wonder why the first verse where they talked about some events only talked about events from Season 1 episodes, the next verse only went over Season 2 episodes, and the final verse compiled some episodes from seasons 3, 4, and 5. Obviously I understand that if the song was 5 verses long, one from each season, it would be rather damn long. I mean the song is already 3 minutes and 18 seconds long as it is, and that's about the average length of songs in general. Maybe to even things out a bit, the first verse could have squeezed in one or at the most, two events from season 2, and the second verse could have added a couple events from season 3, and the final verse could have been just events from seasons 4 and 5. I already mentioned how I thought it was odd that the part where they talked about Spongebob and Sandy meeting for the first time didn't include any clips from Tea at the Tree Dome, so I'm not going to talk about it again. Earlier in the song, it was mentioned that Bossy Boots was when we found out that Eugene was a whale's dad. This is actually untrue because the episode where this was revealed was episode 17, Squeaky Boots. That's all the critical points I have about this song. Don't take that as I don't like the song, far from it. Some of those points, particularly the one where I talked about evening out the events from seasons 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, just to get more events from season 3 represented in this song, is just a way to make this already good song even better. The video itself is pretty good as well, so are the vocals and the instrumental to the song as well. The instrumental of this song is called Another Best Day Ever and is often played in episodes of Modern Spongebob, starting with the title card of episode 263, One Course Meal. Also, if you listen to the song, you can hear the audio from the episode clips playing alongside the song. But that's not a complaint in any way at all. I can't explain it, but hearing that audio from the episodes play alongside the song adds to the charm of the song in some way. I enjoyed it, and that's what matters. While the song was only on the Season 6 Volume 1 DVD for a little while, and was also released on the re-release of the complete Season 6 DVD, it would also become available on the next 100 episodes and the best 200 episodes ever DVDs, which were also both released in 2019. It's also up online, so it is readily available to listen to, no matter what. The song itself is pretty well done, and I would love to see another song like this in the future. Another song that goes over even more of the show's history. Maybe a longer song with a couple of the major events from every season of the show. But whether or not that does happen, this song is really charming and is one of my personal favorite Spongebob songs ever. The Spongebob History Song is a nice way to celebrate a part of Spongebob's history, and if you're into music from the show, then I wholly recommend giving it a listen. And even though it has the word history in its title, it still probably won't bring me to feeling any motivation to study any actual historical events anytime soon. 